Hello friends, welcome back to the bench. Here we have a Chromebook 14 G4 that doesn't charge, doesn't turn on, um, doesn't charge the battery. It's completely dead. Uh, if we connect 19.5, we grab zero, um, zero amps, there's no light, no indication that it's, that it's alive. So, in issues like this, uh, it's best to identify which side of the board is the problem. Is it only the charging circuit? Or, because there's, there could be a few reasons. Um, this chip is responsible for charging, uh, and it detects shorted MOSFETs, um, and detects input, um, detects the charger. So, anything broken over there with um, discrete components broken over there, will prevent it from turning on, which means it's not going to charge the battery and it's not going to turn on whatsoever. Everything is uh, powered by, by this little coil over here, or at least when you connect the, connect the charger. So now, if we connect the battery, the battery is fully charged, all right? Nothing happens, no lights, no sign of life. So now I'm going to short two pins, two left pins, and the leftmost and the rightmost pins are ground, and the second one from the left is battery on. So if we pull it low, if we pull it low, it will turn on the battery. We have light coming on, and we have computer booting. Now let it boot. It doesn't have a cooler on the CPU, but that should be fine for this test. And now when we connect the charger, I don't know if you can see that, but it's saying the charger is connected and you can see the screen dims a little bit. So it gets a little lighter once you connect the, connect the charger. So it's detecting the charger being connected. So now the question is, let's turn it off. Now the question is, how does the computer know when the charger is connected? And if it does know when the, uh, that the charger is connected, shouldn't everything be, shouldn't everything be good? That points that the, the chip is working properly, it's communicating, um, but it's not pushing any power, so likely one of those two MOSFETs is shorted, or maybe one of these two. Well, if they, these two were shorted, that would be actually fine. <laughs> it would still grab power, because these two turn on the power. So, let's take a look at the board view. Um, let's do this. And on our board view, these are uh, the two transistors or one transistor actually that powers um, well, powers our main rail so if this one doesn't open here's the gate if this one doesn't open then we're not gonna have 19 volts over here which means we're not gonna have 19 volts to power these MOSFETs right they go through this big this big resistor the current sensing current sensing resistor right we get 19 volts straight to our two MOSFETs that push energy to this uh, coil another big current sensing resistor which in turn goes through this p-channel MOSFET another current sensing resistor and over to the battery so this is our um, charging circuit. So until this coil, and this is our power, right? This is our main um, 12 volt line. Uh, our grounds on the leftmost and rightmost side, and our battery enable that we pulled to ground to prompt it to boot. So if it's booting from the battery, that means the voltage that's coming here. Right, this um, this can remain 
off because it's only for the charging so it remains off uh, it's not trying to charge um, which is fine because all the rest is going through this uh, through this little diode over here and that powers our all our other voltages right so this is our junction over here either we're going from in from the charger on this side or from the battery on this side right so simple enough seems like uh, like a simple fold so let's take a look at our chip responsible so to enable charging uh, which one is this is gate right to enable charging this chip needs to pull this um, I think high because um, there's two versions of it one for P channel and one for N channel so it either pulls it to ground or pulls it up uh, in any case uh, this pin turns on our our power over here but it will only do so once it detects uh, proper voltages and it is on the gate the first gate is over here yeah via this pin this is what detects our our voltage over here basically on the uh, on the coil and that's how the chip knows when to open this transistor to allow charging so our problem should be somewhere here let's take a look at our chip so these are our two transistors current sensing resistor which is um, which is this one right it's going right here on the both sides we have connection or we should have connection to the to the chip i don't see it actually um yeah it's got it's got to be there somewhere so that's how the chip knows how much current it's drawing and then we have these two mosfets which are these two uh, along with the coil which is this one and that's effectively our output. Uh, another current sensing resistor, which is this one. Like so. Um, and we're going, in this case, to P-channel MOSFET. Yeah, so this should be P-channel MOSFET. And so our gate will be pulled low to enable, to enable charging. And that is pretty much it. And that's how it works. Oh, and how does it know when the charger is uh, connected? That's important, I forgot. So you can see the resistor divider over here and adapter detection. Uh, so once the chip detects higher voltage over here, it needs to be above a certain level. It, then it just uses SM bus to communicate either with um, I don't know what it's communicating with PCH, um, Super IO, what have you. I didn't check because we know it's working, right? So I didn't I didn't check what's on the other side of this chip um, because it's properly submit, uh, emitting a signal, emitting an event that the charger has been connected or disconnected. So this is working. So this chip, maybe it's working, but how do we tell? Um, let's go to our pinout and one thing that is very easy to check on this chip is pin input detection clock data cell um, AC OK Uh, pin 16. Pin 16 is a linear regulator that creates 6 volts to supply pretty much everything from, from the, the raw 19 volts. 
because then it's going to drop it to 12 volts to charge the battery and the rest of the system. So if this doesn't turn on, the nothing turns on. And pin 20 is VCC. So I already did measurements. So this is our pin 20 that gets on 19 volts from the charger. So that's all good. And our pin 17, was it? No, 16, right? Um, 16 uh, gives us pretty nice six volts. This resistor is a configuration resistor on pin 10 and that configures how many cells we have, two or three. Uh, so this is configured to, to use three cells or to charge three cells. And that probably regulates, just regulates the current uh, would be my guess because um, because the actual charging of the cells happens in the battery. All you gotta do is just provide 12 volts over here and and the battery is going to do, do the rest. It's just a matter of how much current. If you have four cells, you probably require a little bit more current than you have than when you have two cells, right? Um, so, um, this is basically our culprit. This is a um, very similar issue to the one I have, which probably is the same on this board this board does turn on so the charging chip is working fine but it's not charging the battery so the chip is providing uh, 12 volts and it's powering on the computer but it can't push 12 volts to the battery and that is likely um, also the, the fault of this chip and because so far, that has been the most common issue. And, and I managed to reproduce it in a very weird, not intentional way. Basically what I did, uh, the laptop was on and it was charging and I created the short on the output of the, or the, the input, <laughs> right, on 19 volts. It was, accident. it was an accident, obviously. I didn't try to do it, but that actually broke this chip. And I'm thinking that most of these boards um, suffer this issue for, for the same reason. We just use you know, knockoff chargers and they just break these, um, these chips. It looks like they're, they are very delicate. <laughs> All right, I've, I hope you found this useful, very short video, but um, that's how you can easily diagnose which side of the board has the problem. And obviously always check uh, the you know, uh, passive components, the discrete components, uh, before you jump into conclusion of uh, replacing the chip. The chip is not expensive. Um, it's about $4 in Mauser. Um, these are two variants, um, a BQ715 uh, or BQ735. Uh, 715 uh, uses P-channel MOSFET and that um, this little guy that turns on uh, charging. Uh, the 735 uses N-channel MOSFET. And that is as far as I've, I've seen, as far as the difference that, I, that I've seen <laughs> on these two chips. Um, which means even if you don't have the board view for the board, and I don't for this one, I only have for uh, board view for this one, this is another variation, as you can see, it's very similar. Um, it, it just differs a little bit. Um, well, it's shorter, right? And it has um, uh, the, the wireless uh, card built in or soldered on the board while this one uses the connector. Um, so this is probably cheaper to produce and cheaper to assemble. But it works exactly the same. Uh, we also have a, uh, a MOSFET that turns it on. Um, we also have a, a big coil um, and 
the, the just different variation of the of the same chip. But this chip is present on on all um, Chromebook 14s, uh, be it G, G1, G2, G3, G4, all of them, and and that's what charges our batteries. Any issues with battery charging? It's most likely this chip. I don't have one um, right now, but I will do a follow-up um, and show you whether the replacement of this chip actually worked. Because for that I need to dig out the board. I hate to do it when the board is inside and especially this close to the battery. So at least the battery needs to go out. Um, but yeah, I, I prefer to just dig the board out. And these screws are not easy to work with. It's they seem easy but they're very fragile and they have a lot of surface so you need to put quite a bit of pressure to to unscrew it and it, they're very easy to damage so i don't really find it um that great removing the boards from these uh, the previous versions had uh, different screws much better screws but i guess these work better that's why they're here <laughs> hard to say Anyways, thank you guys very much for watching, and I shall see you in the next one.